Hi, Ashima. It's fantastic to have you here today live to engage with our leaders of tomorrow. How are you today? Very good, Robert. Thank you. And uh, truly an honor and energizing to be talking to all of you here today. Uh, so I'm collecting uh, questions that are coming in live on our Slido. Uh, the top question that's come in is, how does Google find a balance uh, by protecting sensitive information from patients, but at the same time collecting it for a neural network for training purposes? So I think it's a very important question and very pertinent one. Um, Google as a company, there you all know Google as a consumer company for the past 22 years or so, we've been building consumer products. That division of Google, which is search and ad, is completely separate than Google Cloud. In Google Cloud, uh, we are much more enterprise focused. And in that case, the patient sensitive information actually belongs to our customers. We have a clear firewall and a separation. We don't look into the patient's data. Our customers are innovating. And to think of that as a lockbox. Then on Google Cloud, uh, so for example, if you're a Mayo Clinic, you get um, an environment in Google Cloud, they have a lock, like when you go to a bank, there's a lock box and you have the key. So they, that same way, they have the encryption key, they open it up, they put their data, and then they train their model and they bring their research scientists, our passionate machine learning developers and build the models. What we do provide underneath is um, the tools, for example, uh, machine learning tools, cloud environment, infrastructure. I talked about healthcare API to be able to ingest the data, harmonize the data, map the data, and then that environment is available for innovators around the world. Like in this case, Mayo Clinic's own developers, their own scientists, but um, our tools are the same and those tools then enable the building of the model. And protecting patient information, which is so important. Um, Picking up another question now, um, what are the challenges for public adoption uh, and also adoption of these new technologies in the clinic uh, and educating clinicians? So that's, a, that's a very, very uh, relevant and important question. Uh, when we work with um, healthcare systems around the world, or in, in innovators, I think we are in a very, very early stages. It's still day one from applying AI machine learning into the healthcare. The challenges are, you know, multifold, but one of the important one is, A, establishing the ground truth. When you are building an AI machine learning model, collecting the data, labeling the data, and establishing the ground truth becomes very important. So it depends, and a lot of time, healthcare data is very, very messy. The way it has been captured, it's in silos, just to establish that ground truth, right labeling is critical. The second, uh, the VC is still AI machine learning is a brand new skill from the enterprise muscle perspective. There are not many AI researchers in the world, there are not many machine learning scientists in the world. So there is a need for that continuous education of the entire discipline so that we have more AI and machine learning disciplines. They are traditional software developers. And um, the gap is um, in, in getting the AI machine learning as, as a software discipline. So more universities need to train and more uh, you know, students and uh, innovators need to come out of the universities and join the workforce. The third challenge is even when you build the model to apply that in the clinical setting requires validation, requires it's, it's hard work. And figuring it out, even when you have the model, understanding the clinical workflows and how the model will be used uh, in a given clinical setting. I think there's a big, I call it the O gap. Uh, o gap meaning operationalization gap, taking a model from uh, a good research based, something that is working, but applying that in the setting requires understanding uh, how the physicians work, what is the clinical workflow like, and how do you interject the model within the clinical workflow? Absolutely. It's a much longer answer, but I think for the purpose of this, I think think of this as crossing the old gap, operationalizing it, and and understanding the the world, various workflows. So for example, if you're bringing the diabetic retinopathy example that I gave, understanding how the ophthalmologist today see the eye exam. If you're talking about um, 
a different type of model, for example, lung cancer or chest x-rays, you have to see the radiology workflows. So understanding those workflows today it becomes pretty important. And just to add to that, do you think the te technology like this can completely be used by a non-medical trained person in the future, in the situation where there are limited healthcare experts uh, and perhaps even implementing in low resource settings? I think we are far, far away from that. Um, we are in very, very early days. It's still very beginning. I do believe there is a value for what I call assistive technologies. So AI as an assistant versus a replacement. So what we aim to do when we're talking about machine learning and AI is can we assist the medical clinic so they get more bandwidth, they're less burnt out. Uh, today, a radiologist, I think when they're looking at the image, they get two to three seconds per image for a given uh, scan. When you take a CT scan of 400 plus images, can we aid them? Can we make it better for them so they are less burnt out? It's like it's human fatigue when you're looking at day in and day out. I think that's the promise of AI machine learning. Can we assist? And so to answer your question, no, you're not there to replace a medical professional, but absolutely assisting, like thinking of an assistant, looking over their shoulder and pointing them out, like, look at this. So more of an aid and assistant versus replacement. Absolutely. And one question that's come through recently is, has Google Cloud uh, played the thought, thought of actually becoming a healthcare company in its own right? Uh, and is, is, has that ever been uh, a vision or a thought at all? Yes, I think so. And to answer the question, we are a bunch of passionate, world-leading engineers. We are not doctors. When you're taking care of the patients, a completely different skill. And, and we want to enable, so we know our strengths and we want to play to our strengths. And our strengths are not taking care of patients our strengths are in building helpful tools to help doctors take care of the patient. I think that's a very different skill. And, and, and when we look into Google's engineering assets, our technologies and our success in past 22 years, we have the world leading expertise in AI machine learning, engineering excellence, scaling excellence. When you talk about search and, and we return the results and which are contextually relevant. And when you look into YouTube, where we are uh, hosting the scalable infrastructure to host so many videos, I believe in one minute, um, oh, 400 hours of videos being viewed. I think these are all stats, but imagine the scale, the infrastructure that is needed. I think that's what we excel at. How do you build planet scale systems? And, and I think that's a slightly different skill than taking care of patients and, and, and we know our, our expertise and that's what we want to play to our strengths. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a role to play. So um, we're slightly over, but do you have any thoughts or closing um, things you'd like to pass on to our leader of tomorrow audience uh, in these um, unusual circumstances we find ourselves in today? Yes, I think COVID-19 is an unprecedented time for all of us. Uh, I know it's especially hard for all of you students. My own daughter is uh, going to college and she was not able to join. So, however, you are inheriting the world where we are seeing a lot of disparities in the world of healthcare. Right? If anything, COVID has exposed a lot of fragility in the system. And that new thinking now, as next 10 years, we'll be writing new rules of how healthcare needs to be delivered. So I'll urge for you to really, what you bring to the table is questioning, uh, thinking outside the box, and really bringing some fresh ideas and, and fresh way of looking at things. And please keep your curiosity on. Please keep your um, you know, ambition and, and look into healthcare from outside in perspective. How would you expect it to be in not just today, but 10 years from now? So you are the future leaders and it depends upon you to take it forward. And so, so thank you and 
uh, thank you for studying despite this unprecedented times and, uh, and looking forward to hearing more. And after this um, talk, if you have any questions, connect me with the LinkedIn. Always great to connect with, with young, young people and, and your innovative and bold ideas. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and those uh, really inspiring thoughts.